Do you have an idea of uh, uh, broader themes you want to address, or do you go in through character? We 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 usually we have we have a theme for every series. Uh, it's it helps us when we have decided the. We usually start with the crime, with the the who did it and why, and then we kind of work backwards. But then when we are since we are multiplotting with all those different characters, and in order to f make that feel coherent, we do. We, we put a theme, so every kind of story we tell um, in this in the multiplotting has to go into that theme. And if we have an idea about something, and then we say, does that really fit our theme for this series? And it doesn't, then it, it it's not on the show. So we work a lot. I think the second thing we do basically is is giving the show an overall theme for, or the series an overall theme. And, and we also are always working with the, the double story. It's a crime story, but it's also we want to say something about our society. So that's why this uh, this season with the identity was was e not easy to pick, mm -hmm. but we we, we uh, found it very in the beginnings, and especially we also could apply it on the uh, Sophia and no, sorry Saga and Hendrix. Uh, <laughs> characters. So we have more relations this uh, season as well. And I assume that by identity in, in Saga's case, from what we've just seen, when she's not a police officer, she, she really doesn't have one. Is, is no. that? No. And That's... I mean, again, we know that she isn't dead. Um, <laughs> Can you say a little bit about how that's going to play out? I mean, whether she will go back to the police, what, how low she's going to... No, I won't spoil anything. <laughs> in the no. gentlest tease, in the <laughs> No. Okay. But okay. I, can, I can tell you about the questions she, asks, she asks herself. That would be much better, yeah. judging by the reaction. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> she, she wonders, why do I live? What, what do I do here? And, and who am I? And I, I had the sense that uh, taking away the, the police identity from her made Saga go on a very shaky ground. And that was a really interesting path to take. Uh, Tura, you uh, joined the cast last season, a few years ago. Um, can you say how Henrik was received by the audience and whether you whether you were worried when you approached it, because obviously there were boots to fill, so to speak. Um, I wasn't really worried because, you know, I, I, I got this script and I read this character and I was like, immediately I was like, I, I want to play that guy. Um, so I think that was more my, my object, was more how to, how to interpret this character that was so brilliant written. And I was pretty lucky that no one knew who Saga's new partner was. So I actually had like nine or eight months where I could just work privately creating the character without having to answer any questions about how it was to follow someone else. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> nicely that, done. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you nicely done from you because they, you kind of tricked him, right? Nobody yeah. knew who was this shady guy and why was he doing all these things with all these women, and then he was married, and what, what was the case with him? And uh, I thought it was brilliant. I just really loved it. And then it was pretty interesting. It was very interesting to enter a world that had already been created, because normally when you start a creative process, you everyone starts all over, and nobody knows what they're doing or why they're here. Everyone is like uh, fighting each other and themselves. But here, everyone pretty much knew what they were doing, so I just had to like slide in, it was pretty, it was very fortunate. And the audience reaction, I, I assume he's been popular, what, what sort of response have you had? It's been good, <laughs> 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 so far. It's been uh, very good, yeah. Can you, all of you, I suppose. I mean, people who don't like it, they don't come up to me, so I'm pretty, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, that's how it is. I think it helped also that we kind of eased him in, we didn't, we didn't put him uh, next to Saga, the first thing we did yeah. in, in the first episode yeah. of series three, we gave him another story, and since we're multiplotting, a lot of people thought that she actually got a female partner who didn't like her, which would be a way to go away from Martin as much as possible, who was a male character who liked her. And so I think we kind of tricked people there, and they got interested <coughs> in Hendrik for other reasons, and then, oh, 
is a cop as well. And then, so I think we kind yeah. of, it eased the transition a bit from Martin to not have him there in the first scene together with Saga. And also that he needed help from Saga, yeah. and he, he was had a very dark history. And yeah. also, I think the audience see these two, the couple of Saga and Henrik, like two wounded animals, mm -hmm. and they need each other mm. in a way. In your writing process, do you write for specific characters, or is it all completely shared? Uh, no, it's 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 shared. It is. I mean, we write. I mean, we write full scripts. Mm. So. We we all so it's it's all the characters that are in that script is is basically we we don't like oh I'm going to write some Henrik now you no. better do it no mm -hmm. we don't do that but you are more a specialist of saga sometimes you yeah I know her I know her, her better very well <laughs> <laughs> I gave you that yeah. <laughs> and we're all uh, obviously devastated that this is the final series can you take us through the process by which you say right that's enough I think we decided to. Well, we 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 have a, we had a good story. Uh, first of all, as, as as Sophia said, there was we we kind of left Henrik very much uh, with what happened to his family and his kids and, and all of that. And then when we came up with the identity theme, we also had a very very good story for Sophia or for Saga. Uh, but then we decided as well to say that that I mean we are doing basically the multi-plotting serial killer, a little bit larger than life thing. We've done it for four series. And there are very few series that actually creatively peaks at season five, six, and seven. <laughs> yeah. They tend to go the <laughs> other way. Uh, so we say, let's, let's not be one of those shows where, where people say, oh, The Bridge is still on. Oh, I love the first ones. <laughs> uh, so l let's not be that serious. Let's, let's make four really, really good shows and then say, this is it. This is the story we had to tell. It, not everything has to go on forever. And we all agreed on that, like yeah. producers and actors. actors we all, yeah. no all had this are. idea, this is good. And it was good to know while writing, we, we knew that this is, we are going to, uh, to end it. Mm. So this is the end. So we knew it from the beginning. And that's also a good opportunity for us to really find out the best end for the show. Did you have an arc mapped out for all four seasons in any way, or do you do it season by season? Season by season. Yeah, really, mm. season by season. <laughs> then we go back to season before and see is there anything there we can use? <laughs> so we had a, the, the dead sister of Saga in the first series that became a thing in the second series and then that whole thing with the mother and then, okay, so we can bring the mother back in the third series and mm. the mother kills herself yeah. and then let's use that in the fourth series. So. And none of that was in her character Bible. No. No, really? no. no. Then she was oh, completely alone, and no parents, no yeah. sister or brothers. Or she was was meant to be killed the first season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah very, yeah, very, yeah, very early yeah, draft. Yeah, yes. in a very, very early draft. Saga yeah. died in, in episode in nine. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. how, how did she die? <laughs> she was, was killed. Yeah. Yeah. She was killed by the murderer. She was stabbed. Yeah. Yeah. But we changed that. Yeah, you dodged that one. <laughs> yeah, we dodged that one. Yeah. Not in episode. Not I think in the first season. Good, when good did call. you twig that maybe you shouldn't kill off Saga? And all uh, that was actually uh, one of the Wire executive producers said that very early on when you read the script, saying, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we changed it. Yeah. Luckily. Do, and do, uh, Sophia, Tura, do the cast have input? Do you get to speak to these guys or are scripts delivered and you just have to do what you're told? No, I haven't had that feeling. And uh, some of the cast I, I've been advised of. So when you... Uh, get a script, can you go and talk to Hans and say, I'm not sure she would yeah, do that? Yeah, yeah. very yeah. open-minded and, and we are w w apart, we've been apart from early on. And, uh, very yeah, early in the to, process. So. Yeah. Are we telling so, the storyline? Yeah. yeah. To hear reactions? Yeah, we, try, we, are, we are trying to understand your complicated plot. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it's been a joy to, yeah. to be able to, to work to have open-minded uh, writers. So could you give an example of uh, I, something we would have seen that has changed because perhaps you've said why not do it this way? Or? Uh, do you remember when, when uh, in the second season when we said uh, Saga was going to tell all her background yeah. on one? And I called you and I said, maybe we can sh 
save that to next season. Yeah. And you say, yes, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, yeah, for done. instance, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it, it's, um, yeah. No, and but we, uh, our, we collaborate quite a lot. Um, yeah. And because... Um, uh, also, we have we bring directors in very early on of, of the first, for the first draft, or already engaged in the storylining, because our way of working is that that if you get people on board and they can say the things and and you can usually you know actually make pretty pretty much everyone happy, yeah. uh, then when you when you actually shoot it, everybody's on the same page and wants the same thing and know what we're doing. So it's it's much it's a much smoother process and to get what you want mm. it, um, instead of fighting with people all the time. So it's um, you know I remember there is there is a scene later on in this series where where we are going a little bit more into Saga's background and she is going to tell us what she did before becoming a police officer and she studied at the university and so that was one of those times when I just call Sophia and say I'm writing a thing where we are going to tell what you studied before you went to police officer what do you think Saga did instead of me coming up with something and she would say mm, I'm not sure that was Saga did I just ask her. And she said microbiology, so now she was a microbiologist to be, but that yeah. didn't happen. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. Where did microbiology it's, come from? I don't know, and, and <laughs> even after a few months when you reminded me, I was, oh, did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a very saga thing yeah. to be. Yeah. 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 It yeah. is, actually. It is. Yeah. I mean, being that deeply invested, I suppose, in, in a character, are you... Have you been at all affected? Have you, have you find yourself being slightly saga-ized over the years? No, I, I actually had to investigate that question with a, with a doctor, a brain surgeon, and uh, she, she told me that as we, if you go to therapy, behavior therapy, you can change the, the brain by, by doing things in new ways. So I figured the way I, the, the way I uh, felt it felt like doing saga that it changed me in some extent uh, has a bit of a true story, I think. But I mean, of course, I, I'm still me, but I can feel that I have uh, ways of thinking in certain situations that is not the way I used to, to react to things before. Really, that's fascinating. Can you yeah. say it is, It's fascinating and scaring because, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, if, if that's the case, you can really choose actively who you are. If, if we would put Trump into this kind of therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there's a thought. Yeah. <laughs> On another matter entirely, one thing about The Bridge that has struck me uh, watching the other series many times is just how many times you drive across the bridge. Do you actually drive across the bridge? Yeah, we have like... There's like a, at least one day where we just drive yeah. it back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> and we maybe, you know, yeah, we drive, then you drive in your car, I sit next to you, and I drive my car, you sit next to me, yeah. and I drive by myself. <laughs> that's it's why you went to really, drama school. I yeah. remember one time. <laughs> that's why I went four years to acting school, that's right. <laughs> yeah. I remember one time when I, I was driving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then I said to some assistant, I just, oh, I don't want to drive this over this bridge anymore. And he was just taking the, the, um, yeah, the, the you know, where you speak talkie talkie. Talkie talkie. Okay, Sophia doesn't want to go over the bridge anymore. And I just, no! <laughs> don't say it. That could be a series yeah. ending catastrophe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Camilla, Hans, you uh, mentioned earlier that there is always, you always attempt to have some sort of topical, topical relevance, I suppose, to each series. Uh, can you say how that's going to, not giving anything away, how that's going to play out this series, what we're going to be looking at? About the theme identity? Yes. And, and, and immigration, obviously, is... Immigration. Like uh, well, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I think that's just... So in this first episode, there is a woman with a secret identity. Mm. That's one of our uh, um, plots. And also about, uh, of course, uh, Henrik, who is he, if he's not looking for his children and Saga, who is who she, she's not a police any longer. We also had, so I think, and we had also the twins, this kind of identity, and we will follow them as well. So I think, but, but about the immigration thing, uh, it, it's not as we are realistic in a way, because we are, we are um, this is a fiction, mm. fiction, we, uh, but we are, we like to, to 
to um, see what we can find in our society. And of course now with, with the bridge and the border that yeah. we are not used to, that's, that's how it all started. And we still are having to, to show my ID when I go from Denmark to Sweden. And it's a very weird thing to do for me because you shouldn't uh, do that in my opinion, but yeah. it's how it is right now as well. That's a new thing, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was oh, a I new thing. It, it was brought upon on yeah. the refugee crisis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So that is still how you still have to do it if you go from Denmark to Sweden, not the other way around. Mm. But we always try to fit in some kind of social commentary in all our shows, a because we want to do it because we think it, it gives the show some more, a little bit more depth. Yeah. And B, because also our broadcasters demand it from us, they have this kind of, they say, why, why are we doing it now? Why is this a contemporary show? Why couldn't we have done it three years ago? Or why won't we do it three years ahead? I mean, so we, we have to think about those things. And when we started to write Series 4, everything was about the refugee crisis in, mm. in Sweden and Denmark. Uh, so it was kind of obvious that we had to, to touch it. Then mm. it's it's not all. It's not what's all. It's it's going to be a, a lot of other topics in yeah, there yeah. for eight hours. But we started with that one because it was so obvious that if we were going to do a cross border thing for the fourth time in those times, we we can't just ignore the fact that that the bridge is has a slightly different meaning today than yeah, than it, it had changed. in 2011 yeah. when it mm. was as you so nicely put it, yeah. then it was a kind of a road to freedom and Europe and unit, u uniting, and now it's actually a border. And has so. it, it's also been a, a big discussion between Sweden and Denmark uh, about uh, refugees mm. and uh, different laws. And, uh, and sadly it's enough, it's, it's, it's teared us apart. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. 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 we have very different sad. opinions and yeah. in our, from our other uh, view to see that we think that the Danish people, they're more strict, um, harder rules for refugees than in Sweden. Really? Mm. And is, and, I so mean, we have some things about that too. And is that a comments. surprise? Because my understanding was that it, the stereotype was that the Swedes were more rule led by the book and the Danes were more laissez-faire. The... In some ways, yes, but, but, but the, Danes the, would be more hard the policies of our country has changed within the last 15 years. Mm. Mm. But it's the Since same in Sweden too. Mm. We have more and more resistance towards refugees. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's changing as well. We're yeah. just a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting talking about these uh, cultural themes that are particular to Sweden and Denmark because, of course, the show is a huge hit <coughs> here in Britain. Has, uh, from the outset, were you surprised that it's been taken up so readily in, in other countries and particularly here? Maybe, Sophia, would you start? Yeah, completely surprised. I, I came over after the first season, and someone is, asked me to deliver a prize, I, and I came here to do that, and I was completely relaxed because I, I figured no one will know who I am, but sure, I can deliver a prize, and I came in to this room, and everybody had watched the bridge and wanted to talk to me, and I was in a shock. So it was a complete surprise. And is anything you do now when you come up with new series, and you know it's a hit here, designed to somehow appeal or even make sense, make more sense to people in other countries, or do you still have your eyes on No, we, we still write the show primarily mm. for the Swedish and Danish audience, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because there's really no reason for us to think, will this work in, in England, or will this work in Spain, or wherever, because we show, the first series was definitely made for a Swedish-Danish mm. audience, and that worked really well, so we don't really have to change that, so there's never ever we, we, we make a decision based upon, oh, I wonder if the rest of the world will get this. Yeah. Uh, because obviously they do, or in some cases maybe they don't, but that's, you know, that's fine as well. <laughs> and what is it like making a show? Uh, you have, it's a co-production, so you have Danish and Swedish crew, you obviously have Danish and Swedish cast. Is there ever any friction, or, there, or is it does everyone get it on swimmingly? And ideally, I'm I hoping think there's some friction. There is friction, but not as I see it because we are <coughs> from Denmark. And Just Sweden. because we're human beings working yes, together. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> always friction yeah. in some way. But this, this has been a blessed uh, yeah. job. I mean, yeah. this is to, to, you never know in, in advance if a group will work or not. And in this case, it worked. No, I think now after the bridge, they have made other TV series with a Danish and Swedish character, and they understand each other very well. They don't speak English, and we decided that from the beginning in the first episode, that we 
uh, that it's, it's important that they can understand each other, otherwise it will be too complicated with two languages and we didn't want to use the English. Uh, actually, it's, it, it's, it is difficult for a Swede to understand Danish, mm. but it's similar in, in, uh, in a way. But, and we also decided that Malmö Copenhagen is one universe. We created one universe with one, one, two, one language, so to speak. You know, the, the Copenhagen police a building, which you also know from, well, you know from this and you know from the killing, which is this iconic building in the middle of Copenhagen that was actually interior, I think I can say that, right? It was shot in Malmo. And we shot it in, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> 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 fake. You've forgotten it when you watch it. Um, and we shot that in the old police station in Malmo. Which actually was just closed, right? And it yeah. reminds a little bit of the Danish one. And the prison was also a new location. Prison is a new location. Yeah. The and yeah, we changed the uh, we changed uh, the 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 main investigation has always been in Malmo for three series, but now the main investigation is is taking place in Denmark. Uh, so the police station is a new police station, even though it's filmed in Malmo. And uh, the, I think the biggest change, what we never done before, is we left, actually, we left the city for this, this small village uh, where you see the very end, uh, where, where Christopher and Sophie is going to end up. Uh, and we've never done that before because we're not, we're not big fans of nature. Um, <laughs> we don't really... No green trees. Because it's, it's pretty. You know, it's green and it's trees and you can see a squirrel somewhere and we don't really like that. So, but this is the first time we actually go outside the city to the small village. And that uh, was a depressing village. It was yeah. a really depressing oh, village. Oh, we have so to give depressing. them that. It was really depressing. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so that's a big, that's a big set for us. Uh, big change. First of all, completely new location, but also nature. Mm -hmm. I just recently joined a jury at a film festival. Uh, uh, we were supposed to deliver, deliver a prize uh, for best uh, TV series. And uh, I saw several of them, and I could see many copies copies of, like, The Bridge. Nordic or, Noir. Yeah, Nordic ish. Noir ish, just with a little twist or something like that. And then the, all of a sudden, there was a story about religion coming from the heart of, of the writer and, and telling a story that on the paper is impossible, but as a viewer, it's, it's super duper good. And uh, um, I think the answer is to, that it comes from that you want to tell something. Yeah. If yeah. you have something on your mind, yeah. uh, that, that must be the, the answer. Yeah. And also I hope, really yeah. good actors <laughs> and also, I think it's, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. It's you you got to want to tell a truth. You, you really want to need to be able to tell a truth. And then something will work instead of just trying to calculate or trying to do yeah. what all the others are doing. I think that's when we human beings always, always make mistakes is when we try to become or do what everyone else is doing instead of yeah. going from there. No. Yeah, <laughs> and that is huge. Mainly, I mean, it could be plotting, but rarely. Um, mainly, I think the, the 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 really that the the dramas that you remember is because there are remember the memorable characters yeah. in yeah. them. Mm. Very rarely you think of that was the best plot I've ever seen. No, you <laughs> you do want you, you you remember drama because of the characters, and so I think you can't you you really have to to spend a lot of time creating them developing them and, and really, really love everything they do, even if they're flawed. I think we, we, we uh, well, I don't even think I know that we tried deliberately to, to make it, I mean, we tried to be a 50-50 <coughs> show when it comes to female and male, head and lead, lead and supporting actors, female and male, victims, female and male mm. victims. We tried to do a 50-50 there, not to have all female victims, even though the first one here was. But so I mean I think it's very uh, it is very deliberate that we have a kind of 50-50 think about gender throughout the, the entire series, and also about age we discussed to, yep. to do, do yeah. the women older and to you know try to to think in new new ways. Yeah. I was very suspicious at that point. <laughs> I I just had my 
my second child and I didn't feel like going to, to Malmö and do a police officer just after they done this wonderful acting by, by Lisbeth, uh, the character of Lisbeth Salander. So I was very suspicious. But then I met with you and the, 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 with the Kim and with the director and we kind of fell in love and yeah. I will do uh, something that I can't talk about, but, it, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it's going to be fascinating. It's something completely different and it relates to you as well uh, here in Britain and I think you're going to be uh, excited about it. But I, I will, you, you will know in a couple of weeks, I think. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Coronation Street. <laughs> <laughs> it's not British. <laughs> and how about you, Tur? Uh, I just uh, finished uh, doing a play in uh, Denmark. I was at the theatre for two months, and I shot a film meanwhile. So uh, right now, I'm just going to go to my summer house and sit there and... Uh, <laughs> just do nothing for a while. <laughs> yeah. and, and writers, what have you got lined up? Um, you, can you say? Yes, uh, it's not much. I'm <laughs> writing. I'm, I'm writing. Uh, I'm writing a novel, uh, our sixth novel, um, also crime fiction. So I have a deadline on that in June. So that's what I'm doing, and then I'm going to create a new show uh, in September, a TV show in September. And will you be working together? Yeah. Or? Yeah, we hope so. Well, we, yeah, yeah, hopefully. But yeah. now I'm working with the Netflix, an adaptation of the Quicks and the novel by oh, Marilyn yes. Lilith the Persson. Yeah. I said goodbye to them, and I remember uh, walking into my trailer after this, this last scene, and I took I took my clothes off very slowly, with very conscious of this is the last time. And now someone asked me, can you please take them on? here in the UK to make promotions to someone. I just, <gasps> oh, I can't, <laughs> I can't. But I know, I think they're in, uh, in a museum in, in somewhere in, in Ista or Malmö or somewhere. And the car is, I don't have the car. <laughs> it's, it's, maybe it's possible for someone here to buy it at some point, you never know. Look out. No, I, I'm not sad because I can talk to her any minute. <laughs> and if, if, yeah, for you, then you have to see the, the series from the beginning again. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but uh, no, no, I was so satisfied with the brilliant ending, so uh, I'm not sad, I'm, I'm uh, proud. The thinking behind it was that we had a shorter period of time to actually shoot it uh, this time. Uh, we, but we knew that from the beginning, so we never, we never planned for 10. We all, we, when we started Series 4, we knew we have this, this opportunity, this window to actually shoot it. Um, and uh, so we, we always planned it uh, for eight hours, which I think is, is, uh, is a very good format, to tell you the truth. I think we have always struggled with, especially Episode 7. Uh, eight. Uh, uh, eight. Episode 8, in all the other series. Episode, because what we do is when we storyline it, we have every episode, each, each every one an episode, and then we, we tend to move things forward. So things from episode two go into say, episode one, and we, we do that, which leaves episode eight always completely empty. <laughs> <laughs> because nine and ten, we can't move, because they are, they are like a feature film. They yeah. always link together, and we can't move that forward. So nine and ten mm -hmm. is sacred, and we just kind of stolen everything from eight. <laughs> so then we always have to come up with things, and if you watch the shows, yeah. you can see that there are Quite or a, a red few, herring coming there is, up. Yeah, there, is, there is quite a few things like, where did that come from? <laughs> and that is always in episode eight. And, it works well. But only doing eight episodes then, problem solved. <laughs> so it's, we were really happy with eight episodes. Yeah. I think our, our last scene together yeah. is my favorite. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. <laughs> that was really helpful, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. There's something yeah. to look forward also to. Because then. you don't know when that last thing's going to come. No. Yeah. Talk about saga. Or has it been there? Yeah. Yeah. No. Saga, when Hans is dead at the hospital, Saga mm. is lying by her own. That's very emotional. And mm. I like that yeah. scene a lot. It's a short yeah. scene, there's hardly any dialogue in it. 
I like that mm. a lot. Yeah. As, but so you're lying, me. you're lying on the bed. Hans is oh, dead. Yeah. He's been they in a coma for a while. Away, so that and it's empty you're bed. lying on his bed, and Henrik comes in yeah, yeah, yeah. and says, and you say, "How did you know I was here?" Mm. And he says, "Well, you went home. You went to the office." so this is the only place, and mm. then do you want mm. to be alone? And you say no, and then he just sits in the room with you, and it's, it's a lovely little mm. scene, yeah. it actually is. I like, <laughs> I like a lot of, I, like, I, I do like, I like some of the, the, the more, I like some of the crimes, but I, I like mostly, when, especially when, when it's emotional with, with Saga. Um, there is a, there's a one scene when I think she's crying for the first time, uh, when Hans says that he's in series one, when Hans says he's going to move to Gothenburg and, and leave her in Malmö, and there is just a single tear, and she's almost a little bit surprised about, oh, this is this is wet coming from my eye, kind of thing. <laughs> uh, which is brilliant. And uh, there is also one where in series two, uh, where Rasmus is is yelling at her, and Saga says to Martin, it isn't the first time, oh, when somebody yells at you, and she says, no, some people think that I can't get hurt. Uh, which is also such oh such a such a lovely love saga moment. So I love that. I love you when you tell her in series three that you you're too good to to be standing here questioning yourself, yeah. which is such a good Henrik moment. And yeah, how long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> but I have to tell you my my funny favorite one. It is when Saga is masturbating when her mother-in-law is in the same room. <laughs> I think that was your idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that was your idea? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. And on that note, uh, <laughs> we have run out of time. Um, only remains to say thank you very much to our panel and thank you all for coming. Thank, thank you. you very much.